from Denver 7, this is 7 News. Well, as Corey just said, we got a cold week ahead and a chance of more snow, too. It may have you thinking about you know, doing a little shoveling, shoveling the walks, whatever the case may be. Well, still to come here on 7 News on Saturday morning, if you would rather opt for a snowblower this winter, keep in mind, it could be dangerous. How to stay safe while clearing the walks. Right now, we want to talk about snow in terms of trying to get it off the walks and the driveways. And Scott Fritchie is with me now with the Associated uh, Landscapers uh, of Colorado, yep. Contractors of Colorado. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Scott, for coming in this morning. This is a wonderful machine, and this would do a great job. This is a power machine. Yeah, this is uh, this is Toro's 10 horse, 28 inch clearing width snow thrower. We consider it what they call a two stage snow thrower, where it takes the snow into the front and then it has an impeller that shoots it out the top. So we've got, uh, you know, we just kind of wanted to cover a few basic things this morning as far as maintenance items and some safety things. And and one of the things to do uh, to look for before you operate the machine is just make sure that. Uh, Cables and wires are not frayed before you go ahead and start it. Uh, you know, make sure that the levers and uh, control surfaces work all properly. And this that is they... like a joystick on it almost. Oh, yeah. Uh, the uh, control for this, this is a wonderful machine. Yep, yep. And then, uh, you know, if you've left that old gas in from last season, uh, it's a it's simple thing. You can grab a pair of pliers. You can use a household uh, baking tin like this, you can drain your fuel out into this and, and uh, actually put that in yeah. your vehicle. It's important uh, to get that old fuel out. It, yeah, it's not going to run properly with that. Uh, you want to change the spark plug, uh, you can go ahead and drain the oil and you can use that same uh, oil uh, tin to drain the oil back into. And you should be good to go after that. Uh, yeah. And yeah, yeah, I mean, you have to have the machine ready and prepped to go before we get hit by that big storm coming Absolutely. up. Who knows when? Yeah, it's like coming. A couple of years ago. <laughs> it is definitely coming. <laughs> well, obviously, you want it set to go, but you have to. Kind of put your head in gear too when you engage this machine when you go down the sidewalk or the driveway. Absolutely, you want to make sure that there's no obstructions in your way. And and one of the most common items to uh, clog a snow thrower is the newspaper. They're thin. Uh, you know they can get covered by a blanket of snow very easily. Yeah, it's laid out. The newspaper guy or girl put it out there in the oh, yeah. morning, and you just come along. All of a sudden, it's in your machine. Y yes, sir. You know another another common one uh, this time of year with holiday lights being out, Christmas lights, and and cords possibly crossing sidewalks and such. Just be aware of those. You don't want to get those wrapped up. I've, I've not done that housing. one yet. Yeah. <laughs> I've done the newspaper. I haven't done the, the holiday lights. But the, of course, when you get something jammed in the machine, the first thing right. somebody wants to do is. Unfortunately, reach in, yeah. try to pull it out and get it, it cleared it's, out. It's common, but yeah, you want to make sure that you shut the machine off. Um, another, another thing, too, is let's pull the spark plug wire off of the spark plug. That'll avoid an inadvertent before start. You, before you Bef try to clear before it Before you go after the clog. You know, Toro provides a, uh, a little on, uh, stick on board here to go after uh, the clog and clear anything. Um, you can also use a household item like a, a broomstick handle or something to maybe uh, go after the clog. But uh, you know, just avoid keeping your fingers and, and you know, hands out, out of there. That's a lot of, obviously a lot of moving parts. This machine will move about 1,700 pounds of snow per minute. So. Yeah, it's, you know, it's tempting to get your hand in there and try to do it as quickly yeah. without engaging your mind and stuff like that. Absolutely. I mean, I hate to say it, but Joe Sackett possibly suffered uh, his injury yeah. to his fingers from, from the abs from doing something exactly like that. Sure, sure. The key is take it easy and yes, watch sir. out. Be yep. careful out there. Scott, thanks so much. It's, hey, just one Thank last you. thing. What do you think this would cost if I had to go out and buy it? Uh, about $1,600. $1,600? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe I'll take two. There Get those go. under the Christmas tree during this holiday. Scott, thanks so much. Have a great holiday season. Right. We appreciate Thank that. Thank you. We're going to check the weather one more time, but right now let's go back to Dale in the studios. Dale, $1,600. bucks. Give me a couple, okay? Uh, you know what? I have my own. Mine was not 1600 bucks, but I'll tell you, it definitely comes in handy with some of the winters that we see here. So far, I haven't used it this winter, though, just the shovel.